Titulum unde tricesimum navigare necesse est. Lecture 1. Versus primus usque adversum unde vicesimum. Multe naves, multique naute, quot anis in mari pereunt. Many vessels and many sailors perish every year in the sea. In fundo maris plurime naves merce iacent. On the bottom of the sea, a new word in this chapter, fundas, fundi, a very great many, plurime naves, the superlative degree from multi, multe, multa, plus, pluris, or plures, being uh, the uh, comparative degree, a very great many number of ships, lie, yacere, long e family verb, second conjugation, lie, sunk, merce, the perfect passive participle, from mergere, mercise, so having been sunk, or just sunk, they now lie on the bottom of the sea. Nec tamen, a strong adversative conjunction, nec tamen, and nevertheless, but nevertheless, ulis periculis a navigando deterentur naute. Sailors are deterred, are kept from, are scared away from sailing. A navigando, the uh, gerund, by no danger. So the negation coming out of the neck and attaching itself to ulis, and so we then have nulis. Navigare necesse est ayunt. Sailing is necessary, they say. Et mercatores, qui ipsi pericula maris adire non audent, hic adiciunt, vivere non est necesse. And merchants, who themselves, ipsi, do not dare, non audent, second conjugation, not audire, but audere, who do not dare to undergo the dangers of the sea, pericula maris, adire. We have seen it before as go up to or approach, but here you can see the sense is slightly different, to undergo, to undertake. Merchants of that sort add these words, heic verba adiciunt, we can understand verba. Vivere non est necesse, living is not necessary. So in both of those sentences involving necesse est, the impersonal, we can make navigare and vivere, the infinitives, the subjects, sailing is not necessary, living is not necessary. Mercatores, merce suas, magni estimant. Merchants value their wares greatly. Mani is the genitive case. It's the ingenitive of a definite, indefinite price and is uh, used in constructions of uh, this sort. They esteem them as the English cognate. They value them, we would say in English, uh, greatly. We would use an adverb. They little value. They value lowly. They value cheaply the life, vitam in the accusative, as merce suas was in the accusative, vitam nautarum, the life of sailors. Not that is that they don't like the life of sailors, but that they don't uh, count it worth much. Nec vero omnes mercatores domi remanent, Cum merces eorum navibus vehuntur. 
Another strong inversative conjunction, nectomen we saw earlier, now nekvero. But, emphatic, yeah, but, vero also meaning but, and a but being built into the word neck too. So we just have to translate it together, the single emphatic but in English. All merchants do not remain at home. We've seen previously manere, and now we see remanere. Domi, at home, the locative case. Cum merce seorum nabivus vehuntur, when their wares, the wares of them, merce seorum, are being transported by ships. Navibus, ablative plural. Non nulli in terras alienas navigant. Some sail into foreign lands. Quod merces preciosas nautis credere nolunt, because they do not wish to entrust the accusative to the dative. They do not wish to entrust their precious cargoes to sailors. Sicut mercator ille Romanus, just like that Roman merchant, qui e adem nave vehitor qua medus et Lydia, who is transported by the same ship as medus and Lydia. Qua is the relative pronoun, and literally it would be something like who is transported by the same ship by which medus and Lydia are transported. But what Orberg is showing us here is that that relative pronoun can be used in comparative type situations, greater than, less than, the same as, the same as. So the relative pronoun can be used in that way, and we should translate it fluently and smoothly accordingly. Is latus ostia profectus est, cum mercibus preciosis, quas omni pecunia sua in Italia emerat, eo consilio, ut eas maiore precio in Grecia venderet. He, that particular merchant, he set out profectus est, departed, perfect tense, a deponent verb, from Ostia, with his precious wares, with his valuable, with his expensive merchandise. Quas, feminine accusative plural relative pronoun, which he had bought, a merat, a mit, perfect tense, a merat, pluperfect tense, which he had bought in Italy, in Italia, omni pecunia sua, with all his money, Eo concilio, with the plan that, with this plan, with that plan that. So, eo a demonstrative, emphasizing concilio, with that plan that, ut, that he would sell them, venderet eas, maiore precio, in Grecia. So here Oberg is showing us something other than a verbum, something other than a verb setting up um, an ut plus the subjunctive dependent clause. Eo concilio. So concilium expressing now the idea of endeavoring or striving for something. With that plan that he would, so emerat, being the pluperfect, it won't be followed in the next clause by the present subjunctive, but by the imperfect subjunctive. So here, vendere at the imperfect subjunctive is a sort of future of the past. And so we can translate in English as that he would sell them at a greater price, ablative of price, maiore prezio, in Grecia, in Greece. So, eo concilio, ablative, he had bought them with, by, not, not by means of, doesn't sound right here, but with this plan or with this design in mind. 
ita sperabat se manium lucrum facturum esse. Thus he was hoping that he would make a great profit. Now sperabat with the accusative infinitive as a mind or mouth verb, a verbum sentiendi verdicendi, se being our accusative subject of facturum esse, facturum esse being the future infinitive active voice from facere. Facere has the um ending on it because the mercator is masculine singular. And then manium lucrum is the direct object of facturum esse. Thus he was hoping that he would make a great profit. So we use that would as a future to mark the future of the past in English. Back then he was hoping that subsequently he would make a great profit. Yam vero ea space omnis periet, but vero, but now, th all that hope, that whole hope, ea space omnis, or nominative, feminine, singular, space being your noun, ea demonstrative adjective, omnis another adjective, has perished, perfect tense, pereo, perire, perit, present tense, periet, perfect tense. All that hope has perished. Nam fluctibus merces und ja merces. For his wares are buried, are sunk in the waves. It's probably something of a grab bag ablative, sunk by means of the waves, in the waves. Merces und, perfect tense, passive voice, but again we have a number of translation options because of what that verb means in the present versus what it would mean in the perfect. In quibus, omnem spem posura. So quibus must be picking up on the merces. We can't tell with a form like quibus because that's how the masculine plural, the feminine plural, and the neuter plural is spelled in the ablative. So we have to rely on the context. Is it the waves here? Or is it the mare chase? Well, it's not the waves that he had put all his hope in, it's the mare chase. So in which, in which wares, he had put pozu erat, pluperfect tense, he had put all his hope, omnem spem. Subito mercator e divitissimo pauperimus factus est. Immediately. In a moment, subito, the merchant became factus est, perfect tense, from fieri, became extremely poor, superlative degree, from pauper, pauperis, pauperimus, superlative, became extremely poor from having been, I guess we might say, extremely wealthy, dives, divitis, and then the superlative degree, divitissimus. Non mirum est, eum mestum est. So it is not a marvel, it is not a wonder. Mirum est being used as a sort of impersonal construction here, in which instances we can supply an it as the subject, or we can take that accusative with infinitive construction and make that the subject. That he is downcast that he is gloomy, that he is sad, is not to be marveled at, is not a surprise, or it is not marvelous, wonderful, unexpected that he is downcast. 